Hello, hello and welcome to this episode on what is the genetic history. Genetic history is the most important screening tool to identify not only a multifactorial genetic conditions like diabetes or autism, but also to diagnose single gene disorders like sickle cell and disease or cystic fibrosis. The goal of a genetic history is to identify the genetic susceptibility of this patient to a disorder. And the cornerstone of genetic history is a pedigree. What do we ask before we make a pedigree chart? We ask for family members with a similar conditions, that means similar symptoms or similar history. We also ask if there are any known genetic diseases which you, have, you may or may not be suspecting in this patient. So it's not only important to ask for similar symptoms, similar conditions, but also to unrelated but genetic conditions. Why is this important? Because there could be some association of one particular illness to this particular illness. Also, when you ask for detailed history, sometimes you have conditions with various phenotypic manifestations, which you will not pick up unless you get into the details of them. Now, along with family member, it's also important to ask for similar symptoms in siblings, elder or younger. Also to ask all the details, when did the disease start, how did it progress, if it was diagnosed, what was the exact diagnosis and did they have a genetic diagnosis or only a blood or a pathology diagnosis. Now similar symptoms with or without diagnosis should also be noted. So you may have a patient who has a previous problem, a sibling with a previous problem but the diagnosis has not been made. Do not forget to ask for history of young deaths because parents most often avoid thinking or discussing about them. Any unexplained young death in the family should be explored and details of what happened, what was the antecedent illness, whether a diagnosis was reached or not, what investigation, imaging, etc. was done should be asked because it could be an undiagnosed genetic condition which may have implication on this current pregnant, current uh, condition. Also, you must ask for any pregnancy losses in the mother and details of the same. Now, when you take history of pregnancy losses, don't just make a cursory statement. Do get into the details. When did it happen? How many uh, losses were there? Were there any abnormal findings which were detected on sonography? Was the baby, uh, was the fetus small for gestation? Were there any diagnostic tests like imaging or x-ray or genetic test tissue histopathology were performed on that baby? Because this will all give you valuable information to make a genetic diagnosis in your proband or index case. Next we ask for consanguinity because that is part of your pedigree chart. Now why is consanguinity important? If there is first degree consanguinity half of the genetic material is shared. If it is a second degree, it's one fourth. And if it is a third degree consanguinity, that means two cousins have are married to each other. First cousins are married to each other. There's a chance of sharing one eighth of their gene pool. And this increases the risk of certain genetic condition, especially of autosomal recessive variety. Next important discussion is about community. Now many people think that that is not part of genetic disease, genetic history. But remember that a community which is especially having close marriages and are isolated are at higher risk of sharing the same gene. And so certain communities, for example, Parsis have higher incidence of G6PD deficiency. Various uh, Kachis and uh, other communities have higher risk of thalassemia. Now, if you look at certain geographical areas, though the community may not be same, the same uh, community members are getting married to each other 
and hence there is a predisposition for example of sickle cell disease to certain geographical belts also that also becomes part of the genetic history finally though we don't say consanguinity if it is a closely held community there can be something called as a founder effect that means one person having defective gene is getting carried on further in the community and then you can have certain diseases like for example uh, Tay-Sachs in Ashkenazi's use or Dada 2 mutation in certain Rajasthani communities. The most important part is to have a very proper pedigree chart and whenever you make this pedigree chart please make sure you use standardized notation because this patient is likely to visit many other people and even in subsequent pregnancy or the baby this will be used. So use standardized charts to make a proper three to four generations of family tree which will help you define inheritance pattern. We will give you some examples. If you have multiple pregnant, multiple generations affected that means mother to child, father to child, father to boy, father to girl, this kind of affection is there then you will think more in terms of autosomal dominant condition. Now not all autosomal dominant diseases have to manifest themselves and that is known as penetrance. So there could be a condition say for example achondroplasia where it is 100% penetrance. So if somebody has achondroplasia they will pass on their genes to 50% chance of them passing their genes to their sibling to their uh, offspring. But there are many conditions where you may not, the person may not pass on the genes to the subsequent pregnancy. There is something known as variable expression. That means a particular genetic disease may have multiple signs and symptoms, but only some will manifest. And so it is important to ask for details of all related symptoms in the family. On the other hand, you have on your pedigree chart visually a horizontal representation then you think that means all the sibs or cousins are getting affected then you are more likely to be dealing with an autosomal recessive disorder. If you see that males are only getting affected and you have a maternal uncle who is getting affected or cousins of maternal sister is getting affected then you know you are probably dealing with a X-linked recessive disorder. You may have certain pattern on pedigree which is not fitting into your Mendelian inheritance. That means a mother who is affected will have all their siblings meaning boys and girls both getting affected and but the affected male is not transmitting the disease. Now this is classical of mitochondrial inheritance. Also important to remember in taking history even if you have a distant relative Say for example a distant relative has a child with fragile X that still increases the risk of fragile X possibility in your patient. So important to remember that risk of recurrence is not limited only to these standard Mendel inheritance. Now if you have diseases which have multifactorial inheritance then all the first degree relatives have the same risk. But if Suppose a couple with cleft leaf cleft palate has a child, the risk of them having a child with cleft leaf cleft palate is 4%. But if they already have one child with 4% risk, the subsequent child can have risk increases to 9%. Now why do you want to know all this? The importance of this is to identify the disease early and do relevant specific early screening. And when you diagnose early, you can treat early. Now many genetic conditions are treatable and so you will be able to treat them before the damage occurs. It's also important that you can do marriage counseling, genetic counseling and you do predictive genetic testing as well in order to find out the risk for the further child or in your own patient for the next sibling. It's important to know that many diseases you need to protect the child till newer treatments are available for example Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So this is about how important it is to take a genetic history.
थैंक यू वेरी मच